What's going on guys? Today we're going to be covering five back exercises that you can do with the barbell that are not the deadlift. The first exercise we're going to cover is the pin lay row. While generic and to some extent for strength athletes, it is a little bit newer to other athletes and lifters, especially more of your gen pop. So how to perform the pin lay row? It's going to be a row from the floor with a dead stop position. So you're going to hinge over similar to how you would pick up, let's say, an RDL. You're going to have that barbell over the toes as opposed to over the midfoot. And you're going to think about setting that back and bracing and pulling that barbell to the chest. So the goal here is to not shoot the back up to create momentum. Now, as you get heavier, you can actually do a modified version where you do put a little bit of oomph into it. But if you're going to do strict pin lay rows, generally the goal is to set and brace and maintain that strong hip and back angle the whole time. The next variation we're going to cover is the seal row. Now this variation is great for targeting the rhomboids, lats, and those mid-back pulling muscles. Now, for warning, if you don't have boxes and you have to stack plates, this is kind of a pain in the butt to set up. But just be warned that if you want to do seal rows, more than likely it's going to be a pain to set up if you don't have boxes readily available, but I think it's worth it. So how do you perform the seal row? We're going to take a prone position on this bench. The goal is to maintain that prone position without having to extend the head upwards, shoot the feet upwards in order to create momentum and row. We want to really rely on the rhomboids and the pulling muscles to generate force and strength in this movement. So what does that look like? Ideally, when you take position, you want your hands just being able to reach the barbell. This is actually a little bit short for me. I would prefer to have it a little bit longer, so maybe another two plates of the 10 pounds here. But from here, we're gonna take that dead stop position, brace, and row. Now, a couple of things to remember with this movement, and some things that I think people often get wrong is, number one, try to keep those hips and torso down on the bench. Doing this is gonna allow us to actually focus on using the muscles that are supposed to be doing the lift versus compensating and shifting force into other areas. And the second point to remember is that when you're performing the seal row, you do not need to hit the bench every single time when performing the reps. Oftentimes, you can row and get a great full range of motion, stopping just shy of the bench. A lot of folks think they have to rock the bench in order to have a full rep count. That's not necessarily the case. If you're getting the full contraction, then that is plenty for the desired adaptation we are shooting for. The third variation we are gonna discuss is the Meadows Row. This exercise is called the Meadows Row because it is named after elite bodybuilder and strength coach, John Meadows. Now, why is it so great? How do you perform it? So for the Meadows Row, I actually like to position the barbell on the midfoot towards the toe, stagger that stance, put a little bit of weight in this hand rested on the leg, not putting too much stock and resting here. And then ideally you'll have 25 pound plates. If you use the bigger 45 pounds, you kind of limit your range of motion. So I would recommend going with 25 pound plates. To perform this row, you're gonna take a stance where you grip the end of the barbell. You're gonna let that lat fully stretch at the bottom and you're gonna row upwards. Thinking as though you're performing what would you normally call a normal dumbbell row. And now the reason this exercise is so great is because as previously mentioned, you get a little bit more stretch on that eccentric with this variation, plus it changes the pulling path with the barbell being fixed in a landmine position. So all in all, this is a great accessory to add to your routine for lat growth. All right, the fourth variation we're gonna discuss is the good morning, and that is with the barbell. If you've never performed barbell good mornings, then I recommend using a sandbag or dumbbell and performing that variation of this good morning. That is a great way to kind of lead yourself into the barbell good morning. So how do you perform these? Well, for starters, a big part of the barbell good morning is getting placement on your back correctly. Right off the bat, one thing you want to avoid is having that barbell placed very high up on the neck. Obviously, you do not want to go into flexion of the torso and have a barbell pushing down on your neck. That is not ideal. For me personally, I like to put it just above my low bar positioning, so it'll be on the rear delt, but not as far down. And what I'm gonna be doing here is I'm really pulling down with my arms, so I'm ensuring that that barbell is gonna stay in that nice packed position. So at the top, we're gonna to stand upright, we're gonna hinge, creating a soft bend in the knee, and then we are going to go into flexion, slowly lowering down. The good morning is not a movement that you wanna dive bomb. Perform it nice and slow through that eccentric movement pattern, which is the lowering pattern, and be very mindful of when you start to feel any flexion of the lumbar. 
The way you know when you should come back up in this movement, and the easiest way to kind of tell if you're alone without a coach, is the moment you start to feel that lumbar round or that bar start to roll forward, come back up, regain positioning, and start again. So if you start to come down and the lumbar starts to roll or that barbell comes up on the head and you lose positioning, come back up, reposition, start from the top. You wanna to ensure you're hitting a range of motion where you're feeling a stretch, but you're not putting yourself into a compromising position. There is no one size fits all range of motion here, so don't think you have to hit as far as you can every rep. Do what you can and work into creating a greater range of motion over time with an external load. The final barbell variation that we're gonna talk about for back training is a deadlift variation. I know we said we wouldn't talk about the deadlift, but this is a little bit different. This is the suitcase deadlift. This is a unilateral version of the deadlift, and how you're gonna perform this is just like as the name states. For the barbell suitcase, you're gonna grab that barbell in the center. One thing I will note is that ideally you wanna perform this on a barbell that has center knurling. If you don't have one, that's okay. You might just have to go a little bit lighter because it's gonna be a little bit more slippery. So for this, you're gonna take a position similar to as you would in a conventional deadlift. Then you're gonna pack that lat load. Stand up. If you perform these correctly, when you stand up, that barbell will be right in the middle and center. And it's also a great exercise for grip. So you're kind of getting that two for one benefit. So if you ever find yourself in a situation where you only have a barbell and you want to perform more for the back than just the deadlift, hopefully this video gave you a couple of ideas. Really, with training like this, with limited equipment, your imagination is the only limitation you really have. So if you want to learn more about these exercises, check out the link down below or Google Barbend and Back Exercises.